Well, it is almost time to finally put away those winter gloves and boots. It's the first day of spring. The spring equinox officially arrives in just a little while. It's 4, 4 24 p.m. So here's a little something we made today to celebrate this season. The snow still lingers on the ground and scarce are flowers to be found. Yet in the air, there's something new, a sense of life, a feeling true that soon the world will come alive and all that's dormant will revive. The sun may hide behind the clouds, but soon it will break through the shrouds and warm the earth with its embrace, bringing new life to every space. So let us welcome spring today with hope and joy come what may for even though it may seem slow the world is waking and will grow let's celebrate the start of spring and all the joys that it will bring well did you enjoy that little ode to spring well, we didn't write a single word of it. No, we did not. <laughs> we asked the artificial intelligence chatbot, ChatGPT, to write us a poem about the first day of spring. Artificial intelligence is reshaping society as we know it. Yanatan Mitz is an assistant professor of industrial and systems engineering at UW Madison and an expert at machine learning in human settings. Welcome to Live at Four. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. So, if, if people don't know what AI, artificial intelligence, is, basically, what is it? Well, Mark, artificial intelligence is uh, really kind of a misnomer. It's a set of tools that we use for uh, learning patterns in the world uh, using different forms of mathematics, right? So. Whereas classical programming and classical learning, we might program explicitly what a, a computer program ought to do. Uh, with artificial intelligence, we use a bunch of examples of what works and what doesn't work, feed that into an algorithm, and it sort of learns itself what the pattern is that it should be replicating. The machine is learning itself. The machine is teaching itself teaching and itself. learning by itself. That's right, Mark. It, exactly. We asked it to write us a poem about the first day of spring, and chat GPT can write essays and speeches. It can offer logical reasoning and analyze pictures, and it can take tests. It, uh, it recently scored in the 90th percentile on the bar exam and got a 700 on the SAT math portion of, of that test. Is this a tool that is in human control, or is this something we're going to be able to get back in the bottle? I think... Uh, Susan, the way to think about it is it's very much in human control. It even uh, does have guardrails. Uh, but something that's really important to keep in mind is there is no mind of its own, right? ChatGPT, the way it was trained, was looking at patterns of language and then replicating those patterns of language based on an internal encoding that, that it kind of views language mathematically. So when ChatGPT generates a sentence or generates an answer to an SAT question or even to a, a the bar exam questions. It's not as if ChatGPT actually understands core concepts in law. <laughs> ChatGPT just knows what a good bar exam answer must look like and tries to replicate that answer uh, to the question. But there is, some students might want to use this to like write a term paper or fill in an exam. What is the guardrail there? Sure. I think academic ethics is very important, Mark, and I think uh, we have to keep in mind if students use ChatGPT, that may be a great first draft but they still probably are going to want to edit it. Uh, I have a couple colleagues who tried to ask ChatGPT to write, you know, an intro to a research paper. And ChatGPT will write something that seems very convincing. Then it will start including citations from scientists who don't exist to <laughs> papers that don't exist that, you know, without a closer look, uh, you might run amiss. But you are right, in my opinion, I think one of the biggest dangers with ChatGPT uh, is its uncanny ability to write very well passing prose, where unless you're an expert in the particular subject matter that ChatGPT is trying to propose to you, it might be really hard to detect the inaccuracies uh, that it's producing uh, for its very well sounding answers. There is such tremendous potential for good, but there are huge unknowns with this. But, but it's here. This is the future, right? Artificial intelligence. It's here to stay, and it's probably going to become more pervasive in our lives. That's right, Susan. And the question really should be, how do we harness uh, the, this technology for good versus letting it run amok and, and, and run in a, uh, towards evil, right? For instance, right, when we develop nuclear power, we could use it to power cities and uh, reduce emissions. We could also create weapons of mass destruction to destroy the world. Uh, 
Same thing comes with any new technology, and that's what we need to be vigilant of. As we do our design, figuring out what data is being used to train these models, what are the representations that they're catching, and what might be the effects that it has on disparate communities uh, versus uh, replicating, you know, sort of systemic injustices that exist in the data from the past. But this is in infancy. We're just starting with all this, so we're going to have to have you back and talk a little bit more about all of the Oh, we need so much more time. <laughs> that we right. Do. I'll write another poem. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today. No, thank you so much, Mark and Susan. I really appreciate it. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks.